Hi guys, welcome back. Um, yeah, it's England again, I'm afraid. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did my quick one off the back of the game because I was so excited by the weird game. It was strange. Got my yeah. thoughts out there, but Al didn't get his chance. No, so this is true. Alex this is, is true. in to give us his ideas, and we're going to do it slightly differently and pick our team for next week yeah. as well. Go on, then. what, what I do mean, you think? I thought the first 20 minutes from an England supporter's point of view, yeah. exceptional. I thought everything that was wrong with the Six Nations uh -huh. was in that first 20 minutes. They were superb. They attacked at pace. They had front foot. The yep. defence was up in the South Africans' faces. They didn't kick ball away. George Ford was immense in the first 20 minutes. Picking passes at will. Running lines were incredible. Pace of the game was superb. Yeah. And then after that, it was kind of the complete opposite. South Africa really grew into the game after that first 20. Why do you think, I, I'm going to save my, my idea here a second, why yeah. do you think South Africa was so good in the next bit of the game? They just had all the ball, didn't they? Okay. They controlled okay. the game. Fine. They controlled the game. Pollard was poor, I thought, for me personally. Pollard was poor in the first 20 minutes. Yes. And as they had more ball, the South Africans, his game management was, was great. Along with the clerk, who I thought, for me personally, he was man of the match by a long shot. Okay. Those cool. two bossed the game. So you're kind of thinking the same thing. It was, it was a game of attacks, wasn't it? Yeah, When it England was, yeah. attacked, they looked awesome. Yeah. When South Africa attacked, they looked awesome. And South Africa just attacked for twice as long as England did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I but, think that was kind of the difference. Yeah, I think having Mike Brown on the wing... Go on, yeah. For me, me was a him. massive problem. Because... Because... Uh, oh, hang on, let me just find. Uh, Nkosi, yeah. rapid. Oh, yeah. Massively quick feet, yeah, and yeah. Brown really got showed up on a few occasions with his lack of speed. Yeah. Con conversely, Johnny May, on the other side, who has pace to burn, mm -hmm. was so dangerous. Johnny May, I didn't say this in my last video, but he really impressed me because he yeah, actually he was... created the first yeah, two yeah, tries. Yeah. He was and, quality. And then his finish at the end was awesome. Yeah. One of his best games, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Well, I think he was the most dangerous England performer on, yeah. the, on the day. Brown's an interesting one because actually what he physically did when he got into the action was yeah. excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem was what he couldn't do because he's too slow. Yeah. And there's nothing he could do about that. So I can't blame him. Yeah. It just, at times when they got to the edge of the defence, Brown's just treading water. Yeah, yeah. So I think I wrote down on Saturday that I would say I'd go back to what works. You know that Daly May Brown with mm -hmm. Brown at fullback is a good effective combination. Yeah, yeah. it's a bit steady, it's yeah. a bit safe, but it works, it's effective. I'd go with that. I mean, if you had, say, um, Anthony Watson out, then yeah. I'd probably put Anthony Watson on the wing and keep Daly at fullback. Even though Daly did make a couple of glaring errors, he did do some really good stuff. Yeah, as well. I mean, for the try, why is he trying to pick it up? Why, just, why don't you dot it down? Just, I mean, I, I, watching you think. I know. What's he trying to do? I know. I know. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's you know you don't want to criticise people unduly, but that was just such a a glaring, obvious, yeah, simple yeah, yeah. error. That, yeah. Anyway, so um, yeah, I'd go with that back three. Yeah, and I think the rest of the game, they were they were really passive. I mean, they didn't have much ball, but if you don't have much ball, you you want to fight to get that ball back, and they yeah. didn't look like there was much fight <laughs> to get the ball back. It's interesting because I had a few comments saying um, that. I said the altitude probably affected them. Some people said no, it didn't. Some said yes, it mm. did. I think it definitely did. England looked strong in the last bit of the game, largely because I think their subs brought some impetus. Yeah, to yeah, them. yeah, yeah. Um, but just just remember, they were they haven't done any altitude training. No, they were training at sea level, then suddenly went up to, for the game, and that's tough. Yeah, okay? I'm not, it's not an excuse. It's just you know, part of the reason maybe why they look flat. And Billy Vinopola, who was short of fitness anyway, he looked extra short of fitness, yeah, possibly because of that, you know, lung burning, yeah. uh, lack of oxygen up there. Yeah, and I think for me, the person who surprised me the most was a Tojo. Go on. I thought he was poor, and I know they took off as Equa yeah. after 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. I would have gone really out there and taken a Tojo off after that because Vaf the clerk had got in his head. True. There were five, six times yeah. where he'd That's taken him late off the ball. Yeah. Faf de Klerk's rubbed his face in it a bit. 
And he'd, he had got under his skin he, in that first had. half. And then I think what irritated him even more is he actually made a great tackle on Faf de Klerk, yeah, yeah, ripped yeah. the ball off him, and he got called for a high tackle. Yeah. It was not a high no, tackle. No, no. He kind of had his hand on his shoulder, and yeah. come on, you have to be allowed to do yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. I think, it's crazy. for me, I, I would have but, gone with that. I, didn't, I think it's tough on Ezekwe, because he hadn't really done anything wrong. Shields yeah. didn't really add anything well, for he's me, not a but second he's coming in the second he's row. Not a sec I think it was just a massive... I think <clears> they had to get to second half, have a proper talk and bring Shields on at six, because that's where you needed to see him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Tojo made loads of errors, but he did some good stuff as well. Yeah. But he gave away you know, a try when he tried to tackle De Klerk, because he wanted to smash him and yeah, realised yeah. he was... Offside. It's that, it's that little yeah. thing. I think that, yeah. that's where De Klerk's such a good scrum half because he's niggly, he gets in your face. Yeah. He was um, around the around the sides of the ruck. He was quality, wasn't he, at the okay. weekend? Really yeah, absolutely. Good. Any other changes to the England back line for next week? Uh, yes. Go. On. So I I would go yeah. Youngs at nine, Cipriani at ten. But even though Ford did nothing wrong in attack, I would give it a go. I think you've you've lost the first test. Yeah. George Ford looks great with go forward ball. Cipriani, yeah. yes, is going to be very similar in that respect. Mm -hmm. I just think he's one of those that creates something from nothing. Yeah. George Ford, uh, Cipriani's a maverick, a bit like you say Quay Cooper was yeah. for Australia. That he he does things that are a little bit outside the box, and I think that's a little bit that's what England need. I'd stick with Farrell and Slade. Combination worked well at the weekend, I thought. It, I would give Lazowski a go, just because I think he's the form 13. I don't think there's much they can do in this back line to change a whole lot, no. to be honest. There's, there's no size they can bring in. Yeah. Bringing Cipriani, I, I get it gives him a go, but you know he's great in attack, not the best in defence, and that's kind of the same as yeah. Ford, I guess. But I'd, I, For me, I'd give him a go. I think okay. you've, you've got to try something a little bit different. They're, they're yeah. obviously slightly unsure with George Ford at the moment. Yeah. Try something different. Go a bit out of the box. Yeah. That's what I think I would I would go with. I mean what I would say guys is um this back line isn't built for defence. Okay, it's not built for defence at all. They're all committed but they're small and the midfield the midfield is essentially slack size and speed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the the way let's go on to Gustard now and mm. his defence. This defence completely um, was ill suited to what South Africa brought. Yeah. South Africa, they got over the gain line, fine. But then when they went wide, England defended so narrow, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they were expecting their back line to get on a super quick drift, and they're not quick enough to do it. You get uh, Willie LaRue yeah. on the edge, he was on the edge against Brown a few yeah, times, yeah, against yeah. Slade a few times, and if you're defending narrow, it's just game over. Mm. Yeah, you no, have agreed. to spread that defence out a bit more. You've got, to, you've got to admit, this back line isn't that good defensively. We're going to have to spread a bit more to give them a chance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But Gustard doesn't like that. He likes up in your face. <laughs> smash and attack, but when yeah. Faf de Klerk was playing so crazy fast, England could never get set, yeah. plus they were tired, yeah. plus they were defending narrow, and it's just such a bad defensive set-up yeah. for South Africa. I mean, I don't know whether, I don't, I don't know what you guys think, but I mean, we were talking about it beforehand, and I think he's got the Harlequins job Go on. at a good time, because yeah. actually, I think if things carry on the way that they are, defence in the Six Nations was poor, yeah. Defence in the first test against South Africa was poor. Yeah. If he's not careful, his stock is going to be really, yeah. really low. He's clearly not a bad coach because he's done so many great things in his life. But you know, the good coaches adapt. Yeah. That's what I mean. They adapt. Yeah. We can see this defence is not working anymore. Teams yeah. have worked it out and England aren't doing it well enough. Yeah. But he hasn't changed. No. He's only got two games left in charge. Would he change now? Surely not. Probably not. But I mean, I'm, I've got a similar point written down actually about Eddie Jones. Mm -hmm. Is Eddie Jones getting found out? Well, because the Six Nations, they were poor. They had no what, answers. On, what, did, what did Eddie Jones do wrong in this game? What could you see he was directly responsible for? I just, I don't think they were very prepared. As in they trained down at sea level when they should have been up at altitude? I mean, that's part of it. But I think they just lack, as soon as they get put under the pump, mm -hmm. they get starved of possession, they get starved to go forward ball, they look like rabbits in headlights. Yeah, they I, go, I, have well, I don't know, what do we do now? I have sympathy for him, because I think Eddie Jones is getting really frustrated. He, he wants to be able to slow the ball down. He wants to be able to turn the ball over. And, uh, you know, he, they're trying, but they're just not good enough at the moment for some reason. Are they tired? I don't know. But it's funny, because that 
it's not a very, it's not a dissimilar side to the one that had the the crazy unbeaten streak. Yeah. But then I again, guess, is it look, really? They, they only the... lost by three points. They did. They yeah. only lost yeah, by yeah, three they points. Did. They just needed to control the game a bit more. Mm. You know, make a few less of those silly, silly errors. The Toji not to fall over. Elliot Daly not to dot the ball down, and they win. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's interesting. I mean, for me, they're under serious pressure next week. Yeah. That that is for a South African team in the position that they've been the last two three years. That was. That's a massive confidence booster, that, to win that first test. Taking away us being England fans, actually, it's probably a good result for world rugby. South yeah. Africa needed that boost. Absolutely. They Absolutely. needed that boost. But they needed those, those overseas players and they to come need, back. They needed them. Yeah. Big time, yeah. yeah. Dwayne Absolutely. Vermeulen, Willie LaRue, yeah. Faf de Klerk, yeah. Made those three were... And, and Pollard amazing. did look like the be- better than Yankees when they got going in possession. Yeah. He looked quality then. Yeah, so we'll he see did. if he goes again. Okay, uh, are you going to make any changes in the pack? Um, I'd probably bring Harry Williams on instead of Sinclair. I okay, think, yeah, I think Williams exactly is probably a bit s- more solid oh, yeah, to is. start the game. Um, and actually, Carl, I think Carl Sinclair had so much more coming off the bench for yeah. me. Sinclair, again, he did fine, but he struggled to impose himself on the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, and because England were defending so much, Williams is a big uh, hitter. Just a unit, He's got big stopping power, yeah, so yeah. I think that's a fair call. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, second rows? Well, I think you bring in Hill yeah, for Zeke. Yeah, I've got the same. Okay, I don't think Zeke did anything worse than anybody else particularly. No. He just caught the wrath of Eddie Jones. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's worth changing it up so he doesn't get targeted. And yeah, and actually, I, Johnny Hill's an interesting one. I, I want to see him in an international shirt. I think he offers yeah. a lot. He's an athlete. He's a big defensively, yeah. good in the line out. Hopefully, Otoje is going to bounce back from that game. He's got yeah. so much ability. He just yeah, needs yeah, to yeah. control it. I think this is where we'll differ, you and I. I think I'm, I'm going to give Shield a, a go at six, just because we need to see him. Rob Shaw was Rob Shaw. Mm. Um, but I think you're not going to lose anything. Let's give him a crack. We need to see Yeah, see, I've gone Shields, Rob Shaw, Vanapola. I've gone okay. Rob Shaw at seven. Yeah, OK. I, I'm just going to keep Curry in there. I thought Curry did really well, actually. Yeah, he, he had a good game. 19, 20. Yeah, he had a good game. A- and he was struggling a bit physically at times, but he, he put it about. Yeah. And he's trying to get on the ball. He's trying to do the right things. Yeah. He's our only proper seven mm. available, I think, at the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, Underhill, I think, would actually be perfect for this tour. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah he would be. Whatever. Yeah. And I mean, I've gone Robshaw just for work rate yeah. than anything. Yeah, you know okay. he's going to work his nuts off for the whole game, so sure. that's why I've gone... Um, yeah, but I think you give Billy another role. Um, yeah. He's got fitness under his belt now. Yeah. Hughes looks right. He, he looked had solid when he came on. Good impact, yeah. For sure. So. Okay. There's a team then, guys. Tell us what you think about that. If you'd make any other changes, if we've missed anything there. The bench will be interesting for next week. Uh huh. I'd like to see him go a little bit more out there than Piers Francis. Yeah. In the background replacement. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he added anything when or he came on. Or maybe Cipriani on the bench then. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I think the bench would be quite quite key this week, don't yeah, you? Definitely. Right, hopefully England will win just to keep the series alive. Yeah, 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 yeah. it'd be nice. Um, uh, but anyway, until next time, guys, we will see you then.